I wanted to show you guys one final thing here before this was just today's stream was just mostly trying to test some qu recording quality on a longer duration, but also just playing around with some of the new features and one of which, which let's get a different seed here. One of which is gradient texturing. All right, let's reduce the sky strength down a little bit. There we go. All right. All right, so we have this sort of quick, quick and dirty little setup. And we can actually probably just put some flow in there. All right, so we got, if you want to see this uh, structure, I've done this a few times before, just to get a quick and dirty little mountain setup. Super, super quick and dirty. All right, so we're going to texture this whole thing in one f complete swoop using a sat map. Oh, and we, I still haven't gone over, um, uh, I'll make a whole nother stream maybe next week covering this, but, um, oh, it's not here. Let's go to materials and we have a couple new distributions. One is gradient, but another one is splatting and i'll probably save splatting for its own video well next week we may do a stream monday maybe we can try next next monday to do something specifically on splatting because i like to do one next week before um the thanksgiving break but what i want to cover is this gradient so we now in the texture panel have a couple different sort of breakdowns we have shading which allows you to do all the colorizing and tinting of the colors or of the terrain, obviously. And we have texturing, which is now split into none. If you choose none, it's just going to be the colors. But you can choose between textures, which is the importing process that we've done before, or the substance material, which is the process we've shown before. We're going to do none, but we're going to paint this terrain based off a gradient. So let's just do custom. And... We're definitely going to cover how you can create your own gradients uh, at a later time because that's not necessarily uh, implemented just yet. But mm, there is so much more functionality that I know is coming to gradients or sat maps as um, they're called. So this little none box here, it's kind of hard to see. But if we click none, we can add a gradient. And if I remember... Oh, I haven't downloaded it from my drive yet. One second. So I'm going to download this gradient and put it there. That's perfectly fine. Go to active. There it is. All right. So I'm going to import this gradient right here. All right. So this is just a JPEG of a gradient map that was created off of a sat map. So we can control the range of, of this uh, gradient. If we want the entire gradient to affect the terrain, we can choose from zero to one. Or if we say, hey, we only want, you know, parts of it to be affecting the terrain, we can do parts of it. But we need to guide the program on where this gradient is going to be distributed at. So um, the gradient has its own set of rules, so to speak you can see that this particular material like normal has a roll box right here just above the settings panel just like we've seen in you know the filters and other textures but when you choose gradient the gradient will have its own subsequent you know rules to go by so these rules are gearing and you know distributing the gradient just for the gradient 
and these rules will be rules of distribution for the entire material as a whole, if that makes sense. So there's some pretty uh, unique things that we can do, and I'll show you one of those real quick. But anyway, for the gradient rule, we need to distribute based on the gradient distribution right here. So click gradient, and you can see instantly it has textured uh, this landscape quite nicely based off this gradient. And again, we can control that, uh, that range of gradient. If I want to slide this along, let's increase the sun strength and sky strength to see this a little bit easier. And we can dynamically change, you know, what this gradient is doing. All right, let's go back to the full spectrum here. Hope this is making sense for you guys. This is a pretty nice first stab. This is the very first stab at a sat map and gradient that, um, you know, anyone has done on uh, live. This is the first time this is being displayed at all for anyone who's not part of the alpha channel. All right, so with this gradient, you can see we have the gradient rule here specifically for this gradient. If we select gradient, it comes with its whole new set of parameters, just like you're used to with substance, um, a substance file. If we want to say, hey, I don't want any snow in this, well, just turn off the snow. Or with the snow, we can control the height and amount of the snow say we like it right here but we think it needs to be melted just a little bit more so let's scroll this up to melt a little bit more melt size we can say hey this is gonna melt at different scales how about we just reduce the amount of snow altogether and say we just want it at the very peaks and the melt strength is a little high and the melt size is yeah, it's about right there. That way the snow, what this is, is the snow will capture around these sort of concave areas where the sun's not hitting, and it'll, you know, remain for a few more days. It's all, Yes, duly noted, it's also the first real-time sat map tool out there. So there you go. We can turn off and on uh, vegetation. We can control vegetation amount. We can control vegetation size. So let's say it's really big, which there's a problem with this uh, vegetation mask, um, which we'll f be sure to fix. But when it's this small, eh, it's okay. You can't tell. So basically, oh, here's a good example. This vegetation... A little hint, this vegetation is being distributed based on the splat map rule. This splatting rule, that's how this vegetation is being distributed across the terrain. It's just been coded in to look like vegetation based off this green range here. So we can change how, that, uh, how the vegetation is dithered in with the terrain. Maybe we want to remove some or not remove some. And we can control the sediment. So the sediment, you can see it's collecting in some of these little areas here. We can reduce the amount. Oop, that's vegetation. Wrong one. We can reduce the sedimentation amount or increase the sedimentation amount, which is kind of pretty cool here. And the thickness. How bold is this? And if we increase this all the way, you can see the sedimentation is a range of gradients, and it should be this spectrum right here just below snow. This range is, should be the gradients, or the sediment. And we can reduce this to make it really fine. And a little bit more believable. Same thing with rocks. We can change the rock angle. If we want rocks to appear really steep, we can say the rock smoothness and so on and so forth. Now, I do want to point out that all of these parameters here that, are, that you know, are linked and specified to different color ranges within this gradient tool, 
you can do all of this stuff now just by sophisticated color banding in the materials and roll distribution. That's essentially how these were created was just, you know, knowledge of texturing within the program. They've just made it, um, you know, clever enough to where they've tied these parameters in a easy to use formation on the gradient um, rule without you seeing the whole rule structure. Really clean, really nice way to do it and really easy. So all you have to do is later on, you can easily make your own. Um, I'm not going to go into how that's done just, ye just yet, but of course, you know, we'll cover it. So this gradient, you'll be able to add your own gradients. You'll be at, be able to add your own parameters and, you know, create things like this in a whim. A lot of adjustments for snow, but but saw it all from island water lines. Yeah, there's going to be a whole lot more uh, areas of improvement and adjustments that will definitely be added and looked at. Oh, I missed this line here. Choice. So if it was an island, we can adjust the seabed sand height for the water line? Question mark. Yeah, you you'll be able to do that. Like now you can, uh, turn on, I mean, you can turn on water now, but obviously the sat map doesn't change based on the water level, but you got to understand they will definitely, uh, add that in, you know, say you, it's all based on heights. So with this sat map, this range, say there's a setting here for, you know, an island gradient and you have um, sand or seabed. You want to see the sand or seabed and you can control the sand or seabed height. Or there could be another one of these little on off switches that ties the sand and seabed to whatever the water level is. And of course, that water level is established, you know, right here. Much like how you can tie textures and filters to the uh, ocean plane in World Crater 2, um, pretty much the same way. Yeah, like a coastal toggle, exactly. And same thing for lakes and rivers there's a whole um lake and river system that they've been working on for quite a while and um wherever those simulations take place or if you say hey i want to draw a i want a river to happen you know naturally i can see a river would come down right through here um the terrain you can texture based off where the river is you know a fall off to darken or have more vegetation around water where maybe if, you know, we add a, let's add another material here and let's darken this up, like really dark. Okay. And then now remember, we still have the sat map underneath. So here, let's go to add distribution, cavity, concave. And let's say the step size and we do flow. For example, you can see the darkness that's being applied here. So on and off, uh, let's see, cut off. So I think the sat map is great in this version, but it doesn't have those as much erosive lines or you know it's just solid colors right now so the rock is looking pretty flat it's there's not a whole lot of variation uh in the rock but that doesn't mean that you can't add variation on top of the rock here uh, and we can control the blend value so if it's too much we can reduce it so somewhere around 50 percent. you can see here now that flow and that black is kind of discolored all of the concave flow <laughs> flow areas uh, on the terrain to add a bit more variation or if I like you know a really dark green 
Okay, so here's a here's we'll just do splatting real quick, just real quick. And we sh we will add in Well, that te the texturing of that is a little bit You can see that I'm coloring based off of a, a really weird uh, a really weird uh, texture here. So it's the texture import was messed up. So it create it's creating this uh, blend. But you can see I can even create um, uh, layer scale range. See what I mean here? So let's. Make this really long, and here use terrain direction. So these this toggle here lets the splat go in the orientation of slope to the terrain. There, you can kind of see that effect a little bit. We have to manually adjust the sat map. That's not a problem as long as there's sliders for it. Now, yeah, you can manually adjust it or you can have it just, you know, presets do everything for you automatically. That's that's the beauty of it. You can have, you know, you can manually slide things or if you, you know, other users, you know, World Creator and myself and some of the power users will definitely create presets for you know, different gradients and presets for all sorts of stuff. So to kind of alleviate some of, you know, any error or, you know, um, help you guys produce quicker, you, you can just plug in the gradient and not have to worry about, you know, thinking about it too much. Just need a sat map with sand under the dirt. Exactly. Maybe some palm trees. <laughs> All right, well, we've definitely gone over a little bit longer than I in, had intended with that little side uh, side uh, piece that Kiwi ran me over, but that's perfectly fine. I'm happy to do it. Um, is there any, that's all I wanted to cover today without going too far into these. We're going to, I'll have definitely have a stream that covers just the splatting, just the gradients, a little bit more in-depth things. I just wanted to do this sort of quality test and introduce you guys to um, some of the newest little features. And, you know, there's a very nice erosions in the work, too, that hopefully will be shipped after right after um, the full launch. How many gradients will World Creator ship with? I'm not entirely sure, but I can't imagine that it would be hard to produce. Um, definitely this one. And maybe we can have at least half a dozen or a dozen um, I would hope at least a dozen by the time um, the full version comes out later this year. Like how big is the library? Um, the library to, for me consists right now of just this one gradient, but I can see the library being huge, like monst monstrously huge. And we'll definitely make a library that's really large. I'll definitely be creating some to to give to you guys and, and to go to along with different biome packages as well. Yeah. Sand would work with simple color. I mean, with, with, you know, desert sand, there's obviously different types of, of tan a <laughs> hundred different ranges of tan we could use or, or red and orange and everywhere in between. <laughs> I'm sent to try a hurl off the floor. Oh, I missed that Zen. You're, I missed this quite this uh, point. You could combine height slopes and manual paint for best uh, beach mask. Yes, yes, that you that you can definitely do that. I think I did something similar like that in World Creator too. 
I don't know. It's it's been a little while. I've I do some some bigger jobs for World Cater too, but I've shifted on to using this version pretty much exclusively now for for different things. Oh, definitely, Aaron. Definitely. Thank you. There is a lot of seabed textures with seaweed on mega scans. Yeah, like we've we've covered that before. You can definitely import textures from the mega scans library, the substance library, the game textures library, the um oh gosh, if I don't mention them, I'm gonna I'm gonna get hurt. Uh RD textures, yeah. RD textures is a great library that that comes will come shipped with uh, World Creator. Actually, I can show those. I think I already have once before. Library, RD textures. All right. Yeah, here's RD textures. These are scanned textures, and they all have substance files to them. So let's say like this sand here. Oh, that's terrible, but yeah. Yeah, this sand texture is a substance file by RD Textures. Comes shipped with World Creator for free. This one as well. So you can definitely... Um, one thing I'm hoping for is that the gradient... Uh, oh, gosh. The gradient tool can not only produce gradients for color, but this could be masks. So you can use different range of actual textures massed into different zones here at different, you know, tints to have real textures, you know, be a gradient <laughs> using the gradient uh, rule on the terrain for real textures. It's, it's not quite as, as needed because the color variants work well, I think. For seabed sand plus this vegetation would work. Yep. Totally. Yep, Playhaven has uh, has some nice stuff. They have an oh, a nice rock for free. The new setup looks clean. Yeah, the new setup is clean. Um, for recording purposes, I've turned off the translucency because of the menu. Oh, I vaguely remember a guy making a sat map with a color picker off Google. Oh, so one thing that's nice about this gradient is there's going there is going to be a color pickle a color pickle a color picker for creating this gradient within this application so say you had a picture of something and if you want to draw a line from left to right on that picture or top to bottom or whatever orientation and you say, hey, that that line that I just drew, I want 100 samples or 50 samples or three samples. Each one of those samples will represent a variation on this gradient and thus create your own uh, gradient based off of an uh, image sort of color picker. I think Substance Designer, or at least they did before uh, Adobe acquired them, they have a color picker option of the exact same way like you can just go off off the program and draw a straight line and it'll sample however many samples of colors you want you can even draw a circle and say you want to sample x number of colors in this range make a sat map choice yeah make a sat map choice for sure so yeah the ui again yeah it's 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 really clean but they do have some They've mentioned they do want to polish some things a bit more to make it a bit, you know, a whole lot more user friendly. Yeah, Substance had a great picker. Yeah, exactly what I just said. Substance uh, Designer has a fantastic color picker. And that's exactly what I hope uh, comes here too. That color picker is fantastic. Create your own gradients. Choice is a cool, cool, ready to see LA for old teasers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of choices are good for for them old geezers. 
All right, guys. Uh, we have gone for a good bit. Um, I'm going to end it there. We can definitely go more in depth on a few more things, do some design things. Hopefully I can I'll plan on a stream on Monday showcasing more of the splat map stuff. It's really cool. Um, I didn't go too far into that today, but um, yeah, splat maps are really fun. Uh, integration that I definitely want to showcase more of what all of this this stuff is. World Machine and Guy use bitmaps as sat maps. Yep, yeah, that's very true. Hopefully, World Creator can do some really good competition in that realm. Yeah, heat maps are workable as of right now so real quick uh let's see which one has all right well i guess a texture doesn't all right so here we go here here this uh yeah so you can see we've got cavity here for this color just select heat map and that is terrible how about we just add a color <laughs> and we say this color is tied to slope all right so slope is this is a really low slope so we can see just because of the color that this uh, white is down here hit heat map and you can see here is the heat map same thing for filters and it crashed <laughs> Um, there is a huge, a terrible bug with heat maps right now on filters. So it, it sometimes will show, sometimes will crash. So I just lost everything just there. So that's perfectly fine. But yes, heat maps are working. They just need some optimization. If you can export color map, you can use it to make splat maps. Heat maps. Yep, that is very true. You can export color maps and you can use those color maps to make splat and heat maps for other uses for sure.